Jesus. They are then initiated into the bloodline of the snake. And that's where things take a totally different turn because the Luciferians uh, that operate generationally in my family, they are the ones who operate from that much deeper level of dark and shadows. They are the ones who are willing to use compromise as the control mechanisms to move and enact other individuals. And so that's where my family had this deep willingness to compromise and to give me over to monsters, to, to people that were evil incarnate. Bodega is a guide and a storyteller, escorting you through the night, lighting the way, warding off thieves, ghosts, demons, and other oddities. Along the journey, his companions would often share with him the most curious of stories that he'd record in his codex. Perhaps you just might find yourself traveling with the Codega and sharing one of yours. Click that like. Yeah. If you're new here, subscribe and have the bell hit for notifications to stay up to date on all the new content. Hey everyone, I'm Rai, the Codega, and tonight we got a story of the ages to add to my Codex of Curiosities with our guest, Nathan Reynolds. I guarantee you're going to see a lot of things that are hidden come into focus. Perhaps this is going to be a little difficult to hear because it's going to tear down a lot of false facades that we've been told to believe for years decades maybe even centuries maybe even millennia all right now if you want to help out the show here's a couple things you guys can do you can stop by my patreon and i got a couple tiers there you can check that out uh you can deck yourself out some of my merch at my printify store uh you can also become a member on youtube now um sorry there's a bug flying around that's awesome i'm also <laughs> i also have an amazon wish list if you're feeling generous and finally uh, you can share the show, or you can like, or you can even comment. That, it's, mo it's so important if you guys are just interacting with the show. Or you can do all the above, whatever you want to do. So all the links will be found in the show notes. And I think that's everything. So it's time to bring uh, Nathan to the stage. Uh, Nathan, how are you doing? Man, I'm living dangerously, brother. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing good. I'm doing good. This is uh, part two. I mean, uh, my second uh, take on this one as I... Totally messed up when I initially did it, but hey, it happens. That's what happens. That's showbiz. That's right, man. Don't you ever worry about it, man. Keep going. <laughs> so, Nathan, why don't you tell our listeners and our viewers a little bit about yourself and maybe where they can find you. Um, I know you have a book as well, so let's have it. You betcha. You guys, first of all, you can go to snatchfromtheflames.com. Uh, that's where I have archived and cataloged all of the videos even the ones that got censored and deleted off different social media platforms i have uh there oh yeah dude you know that the censorship is a real thing many people yeah. are understanding this but i i fire double barrels continually and sometimes you yeah, know that happens but either way i i do also have my vote book available there uh digital format audio format for those of you that are interested in it it's name your own price so don't ever let that be a hindrance from keeping you there i also did an entire rendering of the the history of the scripture audio the scriptures as well but i've got hundreds of videos that are on there for you guys and my main place that i post stuff through though is on youtube.com backslash nathan reynolds that's my main place where you guys can find any of my content i've got many different playlists on all kinds of topics as ryan and i are going to get into tonight we got a lot of different arenas that we can kind of battle into so there's definitely some of the heavier more intense cd stuff that's definitely more in the snatch from the flames topic but there's also a lot about the redemptive story and, and the life that we live with natural living and biohacking and natural permaculture and blade design and all kinds of stuff so it's going to be an absolute adventure to get into with you guys but i'm really looking forward to, to being here 
wow, Nathan, you're like a, a jack of all trades. You, you got a little, you know, your wheelhouse is, is almost full. You got so much going on. It's a, uh, it's awesome, man. Like, uh, and, and how did this all start? How did you, hmm. how did you get into, you know, learning all of this? So we're going to go this route, you know, what, what drove you to learn? I had an absolute insatiable need to know first and foremost, I, I, I recognized that I was born into a house of deceivers and that, that never sat well with me. And, and I was stunted from my capacity to find answers for myself because the, I was controlled. I was growing, I was raised in an environment of absolute control. And there's going to be some of you who resonate with that instantly as soon as I say that, but the vast majority of you live under an illusion of control or, or an illusion of freedom, perhaps for many of you too. But I was structured in such a way that the people that were surrounding me and I was bumping into on a regular basis were, were connected to and interconnect interlocked with a cult, with a, with a very deep multi-generational cult. And these are people that were practitioners of a very old religion that was bound to worship the serpent. These are people that were draconians. I mean, there's, there's no better way of saying it. These are people that were immersed in an ideological belief that they could have communications with these ancient fallen ones. In particularity, they were trying to have communications with the Nakash or this, this great red dragon, the seraphim that had been transfigured through uh, horrific amounts of, of alterations. And so my experiences in life were shaped by this lens that was perpetually misty and it was never allowed to be anything other than opaque. And it just distorted my reality. It constantly left me between this kind of normalized Christian upbringing and then this deep Luciferian um, occultism. And, and there was this massive chasm between those two that was never allowed to be bridged. On one side, there was this powerlessness and this weakness and the impotence that I saw in kind of the masses or like the useless eaters as I was trained to believe they were this like th stupid people, you know, people that are just ignorant. And that, that on the other side of my life was what was most persecuted, most viciously corrected was an intolerance to ignorance. And so there was this constant dichotomy and a war within me about wanting to know what was happening on either side of these dark chasms and this inability to find someone who could build a bridge for me of understanding. And it, so it left me wrestling constantly with a need to know and understand. And so all throughout my life, I would have these encounters. I would have these experiences and I would file this um, them away into this category of my mind, this folder in my mind of TBD to be determined, waiting until I found a satisfactory enough answer that that itch, that perpetual longing was finally satisfied of oh, now it makes sense. Now it makes sense because there was this, this culture of duplicity, this culture of hypocrisy, and I never really knew who I could trust. And somebody would bring me along and elucidate for me some information or share with me the secret knowledge. And I would find out later on that this person was only doing that to manipulate me and control me and beguile me and use me and weaponize me. And so it left me with this absolute hunger to understand. So that's that that seed single handedly throughout my life was one of the most valuable things, one of the most valuable gifts I was ever given was it was an, a love for the truth and a willingness to do whatever it takes to find that truth. Wow. I, I love that answer. Very thorough. Very thorough. Now you said you had a like a Christian upbringing, but also Luciferian. Was the Christian like a, a facade? Like, look at us. We're 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 this regular family, and then the Luciferian was really the you know the, the I don't know the the roots of the family. Well, on there's there's a few ways to go with that. The first is. My family was was raised inside the military industrial complex. And so just on kind of the more secular base level note of it, they had to operate as plain clothes spies that raised their children without being without bringing them into the inner fold of that. You know, f people that are working for foreign international groups, state actors, they can't represent that to their children as they're raising them up. They have to be undercover continually, but then they select individuals of the children to be able to be brought into the fold of the secret when they're kind of 
proofed and demonstrated to be able to hold that. So that's kind of one sector of why there was this constant duplicity and this chameleon lifestyle where we are picking up and moving. And there was this, this, this there was this training to stay in the land of anonymity. And so camouflage was, was the preeminent tool for power brokers, real power. The real rulers of the world are anonymous. That's where power is really able to be enacted against others and to control others it comes through anonymity. It comes through middlemen and cutouts. It's not the people that you see on the TV and they're saying Warren Buffett has this kind of value. Bill Gates has this kind of value. The people that rule the world, they sit behind things like the black nobility. They sit behind black robe priests and they, they govern society through tendrils of handlers and managers. And they raise up those individuals to fit inside that model very much akin to a structured governing society just as what's been operating from time immemorial because on the other side my family were inheritors of what they believe was the seed of that dragon the seed of the serpent and because of that they were imbued with god's power with god power the power of the elohim the mighty ones not the most high but the the serpent and they believe that seed that was in that it was a part of their bloodline gave them superhuman capacities preeminent among those was super intelligence and i mean higher concentrations of things like intelligence not just in one specific area but in a polymath you know like in a, in a broad spectrum of genius abilities furthermore it was kind of accentuated in a endurance athletes in a hyper concentrations for visions and hearing and, and an acuteness to smells there's these areas that that would be demonstrated as what they would call these ab reactions right these mutations within the within the children and that's the children that get selected to kind of go into these deeper echelons of it once a child is starting to demonstrate those things even at the earliest, most fundamental ages, they are then initiated into the bloodline of the snake. And that's where things take a totally different turn because the Luciferians uh, that operate generationally in my family, they are the ones who operate from that much deeper level of dark and shadows. They are the ones who are willing to use compromise as the control mechanisms to move and enact other individuals. And so that's where my family had this deep willingness to compromise and to give me over to monsters to to people that were evil incarnate that that were willing to take their grandchildren like my grandfather operates in an area he's a a fourth order knights of columbus and so this roman catholic doctrine is really incestuously based so much of of their practicing of method and power and control comes through grandsons abusing grandfathers abusing their grandsons as a way to to break them and to shatter their their willingness to to shatter their mind and to enact behavior modification programs on them so that they will be cult, they will be loyal to the family and that they will be servants of whichever master is in that place at that time. And he operated a, a child exploitation ring. It still does to this day in Lake Havasu City, Arizona. And this city was built and founded in the 1960s by a guy named Robert P. McCulloch to facilitate just that thing. Another man he partnered with was a, an architect and engineer for Disney named C.V. Wood. And he would make pleasure islands and pleasure cities and different places across the country from Southern California at Disneyland to a place in, in Golden, Colorado lake havasu city another one in massachusetts and they would design these to to be built in and integrated with tunnel systems for child pornography production and child abuse scandals and they would document and film those things as they abused and traumatized the children and that was a way of kind of using a little black book to control other individuals so i was raised from my earliest ages inside the confines of that and then be at the same time being weaponized and engineered to be a participant in that military modality later on in life. So the, the Christian side of, of my normal waking life was the camouflage that built so much of that, but it was not insincere. My family were sincerely believers. Many of them were compartmentalized and shattered as children, just like I was, were raised by these very same people. The illusion of free will is nothing but a, a mist in their lives. And so they, carried on what their fathers had done to them and their forefathers had done to them and they did not break that cycle wow and 
that that's a lot to take in right now. It, it, it's 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 intense and very traumatizing as well. You know, I can I can see that for you. It's very traumatizing. Um, and I'm just from you talking, I can tell that you were one of the chosen ones that were brought into these folds. And um, you know what? I don't know if we want to get into that, but what did that entail? Like, what kind of into this Luciferian um, world? You know what? What was that? How was that? Well, first of all, there's a major distinction and differentiation between there's a specificity of terms, like really important here. Yeah. Luciferianism is somebody, this is not the same as Satanism. Okay. Yes. Satan and Lucifer are distinct characters, distinct entities. They're often junk jord and thrown into the same pit of darkness. Luciferians are people that are trying to balance and assimilate the left-hand path and the right-hand path of occult workings, dark magic, black magic, and white magic, good works. They are embracing two sides of internal system programming. They're embracing two sides of yin and yang, that they can in, in assimilate those two ideologies, that godhood, that apotheosis ascension comes through knowledge that is the the the, the basis with which they're yes. they are appealing to an invocation of knowledge secret knowledge predominantly knowledge that has been passed down through the adepts through through the initiated ones the illuminists the ones that are holders of that knowledge will bring in selected individuals people that have this bloodline are fast tracked in from a different way because they have a spiritual intimacy uh, an ancestral knowledge base that they can tap into spiritually that that enables them to to grow in knowledge much more readily and so that's why these gifted and talented children and families they are brought in and recruited very heavily even if they aren't raised by a generational family they are sought out and they are deliberately brought into this as much as possible so the Luciferian ideology, though, is much of that embracing. They are followers of Halel ben Shahar, as he is, he is described. Lucifer is a Latin name that's adapted much later on in time. But this is the, the howling one, the shrieking one, the, 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 the one who more welcomes the morning suns with screaming. And so much of that, that embodiment is the one who bears forth light and yet is internally nothing but darkness. So that, that occult working that is brought forth in many of these rituals, like when I was, when I was six years old, there was a, you go through a lot of conditioning early on through just intense trauma, intense abuse, every kind of it until you're woefully broken of your, of you're convinced that you can never fight back. And so as like the final climax to that, there is an initiation ritual that was done that involved a, a man being brought in who did horrific things to children that I had witnessed that others had witnessed. And I was finally given an opportunity to fight back and punish this person. And this is where I was brought into a covenant that was cut with blood, with death. What, what, not some kind of ethereal thing, like the general of the dragon, death himself. And this is why Lake Havasu City is chosen because it's the gates of Buckingham Palace. The literal gates for Buckingham Palace exist there to this day. The literal chariot, the royals masquerading is there in the, in the museum right there front and center. Like they brought stone by stone, granite block, this giant bridge that used to cross the river Thames that they had literally melted down the cannons from Napoleon's army and cast into the lampstands of that. They, this, this is a very charged object, a portal that they would practice inurement where they would sacrifice people by burying them alive inside the foundation blocks of the stones. This is documented in the history of the London Bridge. 80, more than 80 bodies were uncovered in 1960s when they started dismantling it and bringing it over here. They found children's bodies. They found a, women, men, all different ages inside the walls of it. This is where the nursery rhyme, the, the London Bridge is falling down. Comes now, from. I, you know, I, I have something. In. Yeah, I got to jump in here. So for it. Are, are you saying that they use the bodies as almost like a mortar to keep the bridge up? Is that they, a possibility? That is, there's a there well there's twofold in there they're used and mixed they will grind up and if if they go through certain rituals they will grind the bodies into ash and mix that in with the mortar itself 
Yeah. That's one practice that is literally to hold it together. The second practice, though, is they are built and laid inside the foundation blocks themselves. So those, okay. those are two different purposes that are served. A lot of mortuaries to this day, the Reynolds family owns a tremendous amount. That was one of their biggest business ventures was moratoriums and funeral homes because it gave them a lot of access to human remains. And so they still use that as ways of pouring and mixing into the concretes after people are have been literally burned up to ash they mix that into concrete and then they use that for building foundations and so the initiates are able to go there knowing that that building has forever a portal open to it that it's laid its stones in it and but That's... the london bridge has documented um, aspects of this and so inside there there are these maintenance tunnels that interconnect with a deep underground military base there that was established in the 1940s called site six the United States Army Air Force at the time, Army Air Base, was established as a rest and recuperation stopover point between the deserts and the Mojave Deserts and over there in Phoenix. And they built underground infrastructure there to facilitate it during wartime. Well, those were interconnected when they created an island for the London Bridge to cross over to. And that was the place that hosted so many of these rituals, this ritual working and this magic, like this crucifixion that I was a participant of and was forced to use a dagger to kill a man that that is what really brought me into embrace luciferianism to embrace this this covenant keeper of death that i would be an enforcer for him that i would be imbued by him with powers to go and enact his will on the earth i wanted power to fight back i wanted power to execute justice the death dealers are the servants the left hand servants of death who do that on this world they you, they connect you to a cult known as the reapers and later on in life the one known as the lobos who do those operations for clandestine secret services in the united states and abroad wow okay okay there, there's a lot to go into now the reason why I asked about so I'm just going to backtrack a little bit was um, the first city the, the first city that I lived in here in Mexico was San Juan de Rio which is in Centro Mexico in the state of Querétaro. Now there is a story about um, they they were building a bridge and the bridge kept on falling down they could not keep the bridge up so Lucifer or Satan I'm not sure which one and I do know that there is a difference I do know the difference that there is you know uh, satanic and and Luciferianism uh, one of them came there and said I will build this bridge and uh, they they put 12 children within to the mortar and were able to keep the bridge up and at this location there is like this statue or this uh, monument of all these children doing like ring around the rosy kind of uh, kind of a uh, thing and and, you know, and everyone's like, oh, it's just it's just a story. And, you know, I, I've always had an inclination to believe that, may, you know, there's always truth in these stories. And then when you're telling me about this, about the London Bridge, you know, as well, I'm like, OK, th th this just confirms it, that this was this was real. Um, and, and now you're talking about, sorry, the, the Lobos and the, the Reapers. Uh, what what are those aspects of this? When, when you, there's this, I, I think first and foremost, people need to have a working knowledge of the word covenant because that's okay, not yes, something please. most of us hear. Mo yes. Most of us are, 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 we hear these promises or people make vows maybe or social contracts, but we, we lack contextual understanding of what cutting a covenant meant. We have this phrase in, in modernity called cutting a deal. Okay, that that the etymology of that comes from cutting animals, bilaterally dissecting animals or people, and then passing through that space in the blood of that cutting, there was a contract, a covenant sworn between two parties. That's a covenant. It's a big deal. It's mutually binding. All right. And this is where on the, the, the path of the fallen ones, the ones that did not guard the ways of righteousness, the ones that did not execute justice. And, and instead, these watchers, these fallen ones that descended in the J days of Jared and they left their celestial realm, these entities came down and bound themselves through mutual imprecations. And they swore an oath that they would watch over each other and engage in transforming 
and becoming like men and having sex with women so that they could create a seed line, their own seed line with an intent, with a very dedicated purpose, well-planned, well-strategized agenda to augment, to alter the seed line of mankind and to inject their own into it and raise up for themselves inheritors, rulers, tyrants, typhons that are that would dominate and control these lesser species of mankind, that they would have their sons ruling and reigning, and that all of these lesser beings that don't have the divine right to rule would be servants and subjected to them. And this is why emperors reign. This is why heraldry and heraldic imagery is still invoked to this day. Why Today, King, you still have King Charles sitting on a throne, going through the divine right to rule initiation ritual that's been practiced from before the flood. These things are very, very critical for establishing a, an absolute right that the gods would enforce, that the immortals will enforce what I say goes. And so that's what covenant actually means. When I entered into that covenant, what I took on was this is my part of the deal. This is your part of the deal. My part of the deal was I want to be able to have power over my enemies. I want to be able to do anything to assault, murder, sneak, and sub I mean, I want to be able to be a subterfuge agent against this kingdom of evil that I saw predominantly personified by people that were engaging in child abuse and, and those that covered it up. That for me was what I wanted more than anything in the world. And they offered to me the ability to engage in that through their priesthood. That priesthood were practitioners of this old religion that came from the Americas, that came from Central America, in particularity, Huachiblos, the fire, the, 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 literally the one that the Aztecs endorsed and worshiped through human sacrifice and the calling of these serpent deities, ultimately so that Quetzalcoatl, the plume serpent, would rule over them and establish peace and dominion. But Huachiblos was the fire serpent that would do these horrific things. And so this priest class was the one who my family had found and discovered their books. My ancestors had discovered this priest class books in mounds that were up here in the Northern Americas. And then they opened those up and began to summon these serpents to summon these foretelling spirits to give them insight into the future so they could grow in power. So that covenant that was cut with me gave me the ability to be a part of that kingdom. And at the same time, it also offered me the ability to join up with these murderers. That's it. Like the end of the day, that's that's what death dealers really are. They are people that execute violence on other human beings. They stalk and hunt men, period. And that's what I, I wanted to do. And so that's what I got initiated into when I was a young boy. But as I got older, the mentors come along, the tutors come along. And now you begin to have a second version of schooling versus what all your other classmate gets. And for me, that's the art of silent killing. And that's what they excelled in tremendously and the art of blending in. Holy cow. Okay. So the, the, <laughs> so so the, this this second schooling, you know, with these tutors, um what uh like where was that in in house or were you kind mm -hmm. of like in in school and taken out almost kind of like you know they have like the you know like the uh, like uh like MK Ultra kind of thing, or or what exactly was the second schooling? Like, how did that happen? Well, well so much of the the behavioral modification stuff had had taken place in the formative beginning phase of it. That's what that's what they call them brutes. Okay, this is like somebody that specific job is to shatter and and to initiate the computer software programming of the initial blank slates of the personality. That's what takes place from. I mean, really utero in utero all the way into those formative years before six, seven, eight years old. By then it's really the system is built and locked in and reinforced. And now it's a matter of dispensing from the little black book of programming codes, which personality you want. So those are what are given out to handlers specifically. So you can have like, for me, a lot of what I went through in the beginning phase was being used and abused for child exploitation. Can't, so that, that happened a lot for me being abused sexually for many years of my life but as i got older that's when i finally was given this access to people coming into my life who would mentor me and tutor me and take me out of not as much school directly because that's my family would take me in and out of schools and move me around 
Arizona predominantly regularly. We started out in Flagstaff, Arizona, but they would sometimes have me change schools two or three times a year because it becomes really noticeable when people are beat up all the time and people are jacked up all the time. So the tutors come along and a lot of times it's private lessons in the woods. It's private lessons uh, outside of a martial arts studio. When the doors are closed and after hours, you're taking out at 10 or 11 o'clock at night, you're, you're going to the studio and you're going to go ahead and learn Salat. You're going to go ahead and learn the way of the blade when it comes to fit for me, a lot of Filipino martial arts, being small statured. And, and that's what, they're, the bladesmiths really are predominant in. So a lot of, like, can I give you guys just a real quick breakdown on blade geometry and its use in please, in field? Please, okay. please, okay. So like, it's like this is a blade I made, right? To most people, it's just another knife. But the the design and the features of this facilitate certain ways of holding it. So you can have a basic grip, you know, like this, but you can also have a different reverse grip. Okay, but this is really this where the edge is facing towards your elbows. This is exponentially more effective at making a pull cut. The, the blade style and fighting when you're smaller statured is about deploying blades at speed and in rapidity of cuts and precision of cuts to stop a threat in under two seconds. Everything becomes about how to turn switches off in the body, the central nervous system. So you're targeting things like the brain, the brain stem, and various different clusters, nerve clusters on the body to go ahead and disable or disarm and dismember an individual as rapidly as possible. There's a whole secondary side to that, which involves the arts of poison and distraction the to disarm your adversary you're going after an hvt like a high value target you have to learn how to disarm them and children are fundamentally offsetting to people as harbingers of violence so it's very difficult for people cognitively to accept a child as a threat so they are used as mules and as murderers in the occult and in crime families because you can use them to covertly do operations and people's paradigm blinds them from being able to conceive of them participating in these acts because to them it's grotesque to them it's uncanny to them it's it's unnatural and that is all you need that that microcosm of a half second stutter step for somebody to resist feeling the violence that's taking place to feeling their life force going out of their body when you're draining a timer and you're cutting a femoral artery and they're bleeding to death and there's nothing they can do to stop it because they're going to die and they're trying to process i something happened to me but this child's the one who did it that is why that's why they're so much utilized and because they have legal protection. The vast majority of the states in the United States have legal protection for children under the age of nine years old, sometimes 11 years old, that they cannot be prosecuted for what are called these grotesque acts or murderous acts. They think they literally a child is not <clears throat> physically capable of comprehending this. Therefore, they can't be prosecuted. So they're utilized by this within the military industrial projects for targeted killings on hardened targets. You can get a child to sneak into a hotel room and prostitute themselves to somebody and then assassinate them and leave the evidence of that to stage it like a suicide. And that's what I was a participant of many times all the way up into my early teenage years. Holy cow. That's, that's, that's deep. That is really, really deep and, and, and shocking, you know, like disturbing as well. You know, that's crazy. And, but somehow it's, I don't want to say believable, but it is because, yeah, let's use children to do to do this. Exactly like you said, you as a person, you're not you don't see a threat, a child walking up to you or a child. You, they're, they're not a threat, you know, and, and they can get in. You allow them in. You allow them close because they're not a threat. It's uh, it, it's crazy. Now, now, I did want to circle back to that one question um, about the Reapers and the Lobels. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you mentioned these these two groups. What are mm -hmm. those groups? What I was kind of explaining earlier is a lot yeah. more of what are the death dealers, which are people that would operate within the normal realm, people okay. that operate within clandestine operations groups. These are generally people that are recruited out of tier one teams and people that are brought out of prisons that are convicted murderers that are better subjects for mind control and are willing to be operates inside that cult. The Lobos is something entirely different. And the Lobos are specifically carriers of a spirit. It's muddy. It's super muddy because there, there is a 
hierarchy in lone wolf assassins. And these are, these are splinter cell assassin teams that operate autonomously and occasionally interact with each other. But the whole premise is built around a hierarchy of alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon. It's, it's utilizing the Greek alphabet to individualize agents inside it. And they operate autonomously to do targeted killings predominantly for people that are a part of the family, the mafia, people that are a part of the Illuminous organizations, not, not loyal to the government that they may be currently serving. It's they're, they are self-sovereign and self-determinant entities. They might be infiltrated into the United States Army like I was. They might be infiltrated into the Mexican Army. They might be infiltrated into the Afghan Army. They can be in all kinds of different positions, but they're sleeper cells. They're Manchurian candidates. However, the level with which they have gone into the occult has made them very competent in walking between realms into shape shifting, and they are spiritually charged in a very different way. And that's that's the side of it that for most people, they can't hold that contextually and understand that we have deep occultists who initiate more more people into that occult. And they do this like I had I was given a target under the Jesuits to go after who was a known pedophile or this is this is a target package that was given to me after i killed this person i consumed his blood this is part of how you bring back dna retrieval you can bring it back by by bringing it into your body and then regurgitating it later it's a way that you can collect dna evidence on somebody and then go ahead and confirm the hit was successful without having to bring an ear back you can't mark the target in the same way when I did that, I unknowingly at the time began a con the covenant process to being bound to this Lobos, which is the jackal headed one. That's a different seed line that they have been carrying and preserving that goes back to those fallen ones and the sons of the fallen ones. Like you might refer to them as Nephilim. Well, these are descendants and carriers of that. There's th there's there's many more than 13, there's 70 predominantly of those fallen ones who had progenitors and specifically after the flood there was another major incursion that took place at the tower of babel with nimrod and and semiramis and this is where those families trace their bloodline heraldry well the ones that are the jackal-headed carriers of that seed line they almost always push their children and their sons in particular into these cults these death cults and so when i killed that man i that process began for me to be initiated into this divine right that now i was a part of the lobos and now i had the spirit of the wolf in me and now i had the right to be a part of this teams on the other side of that coin though it's it's a manipulative setup because you're you think you're you're going to finally have access to power you're going to have access to the best hunters i mean these these guys were incredible operators incredibly capable individuals and when i was later on in my young teenage years when my family went out to colorado springs colorado so that i could be a part of the air force and be later a part of the united states army i was rescued from a use during a ritual by this lobos team actual active agents on the team came and raided this group of pedophiles killed some of them captured and arrested some of them and set me free to go back home. I, at that time, met my handler for the, the Lobos and the person who actually helped me get initiated into it and get special access projects clearances. The guy who fast tracked me into the United States military so that I could be positioned in a place of power and control for them to be able to operate from. Wow. Do, so do you feel that they they made this um where they rescued you from do you think that they actually planned that so they could actually rescue you and be like the savior kind of uh of, of sort like that sort of sort of persona oh yeah man i this is that goes back to that first question about what what's reality and what's the the theater show that yeah. those those things you sit and chew on for endless hours later on in your life trying to figure out was that just a charade 
because yeah. later on when I was 17 years old and I got emancipated to the United States Army and I started being a part of those teams, I got to see how quickly these operations where I would go in and do wet work and I would kill somebody and I would make sure to extract evidence or plant evidence against them. I got to see how often it was duplicitous, how when I came in there and ran, rescued somebody out of a, a human trafficking experience and I got them to a safe house only to find out that there was an entirely different pedophile group that was going to take them into that cult. And I was being used to traffic somebody else myself and set that person up to have a new handler to set that person up. So like you see, you're in a world of continual deception. You're in a world of continual liars and you have no you have no real basis of trust. Like you really don't. You 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 believe it at the time. At the time, I was wholly convinced that these were the heroes I had been waiting for my entire life. I was wholly convinced that the United States military had elite warriors that did the right thing. And I, I'm it's not to say that I don't still think that's accurate for some. I just know that within our special operations group, within JSOC, there are teams like of special operators that are completely different and controlled and commanded by very dark fall ones. I'm not talking about like people that read ritual magic. I'm talking about entities that are masquerading like normal men that are the shot callers for death that are lieutenant colonels commanding 10th special forces group out of the United States Army. That's where the real seats of power are. And they have operators who are occult witch witches they are shapeshifters that that literally choked and strangled their family member breathed in their life in order to become a skinwalker these are people that they have been practicing this old religion generationally <laughs> and they recruit them from wherever they find them across the country through finders clubs and those are the guys that run it and so after being a part of Lobos and seeing the inside what this team was, I saw echoes of myself. I saw mirror images of other Jasons. I saw mirror images of other Eglons and Eglors and all these Megidos, all these different fractured, shattered souls. And I got to see, okay, this guy went through basically the same hell I did, was shattered and ruined so he could be weaponized for this family. He could be weaponized for this government agency. And it's just, you begin to, to develop a camaraderie and a brotherhood because you've been born into suffering. Like you've suffered your entire life and you are absolutely tired of it. And you want nothing more than to execute these idiots that are masquerading as pimps and prostituting children. And you are wholly convinced that all somebody has to do is unlock the door and let you loose and you will devour them. And you're like, these are my buddies I want to hang out with. Like on one side, you genuinely love each other. On one side, no one else on the face of the earth, not even your wife who you sleep next to every night can ever understand you on such an intimate level as somebody who has been there. As somebody who has known what it's like to be powerless for so long and then to finally be the man with the gun and you're ready to go ahead and execute annihilation on the nations. That is a very unique brotherhood. That is wholly unique. That's, that's, something, that's something that if you've never known violence and what it's like to fight for your life and the millimeters of I lived, they died over and over and over again. And how little it, like, this is, I keep some of these things with me as reminders because it's a lifestyle that I have lived that was millimeters. That oh, no matter how close I came to dying, I just was fundamentally not killable. And that was a curse for a lot of my life. I just wanted to die. And I was on a quest to just die. Please, someone kill me. Kill me, please. I was longing for it. And on the other side, I was desperate to be the one doing the killing so that I could control who finally met their maker and was held accountable for their crimes. And it was a very heavy burden to carry. And I got to meet men and I got to meet people that knew it well and they were well-versed and well adapted at being ghosts in the darkness. Wow. That, that, that is a great way to put it, ghosts in the darkness, because that, that's that's really what it is. It's yeah. that that I, I don't even know what to say. It, it, it's something that is so profound, you know, like what you're saying is, is so 
so profound. It's so it's it's so difficult to understand, you know, because of course I've never experienced that. And just just hearing that, it's just I can only imagine, only imagine, you know, like you're 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 in this balance. You're you're playing this balance beam type of game. Like you just someone kill me, but I want to be the person killing other people as well, you know. I and I'm just unkillable. That's it, it, it's 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 crazy. Now, now you had mentioned shapeshifters as well. So these people were were granted some sort of shapeshifting ability. And I know I know we mentioned Skinwalker, and I know people get very pretentious about that, saying, "Oh, that's a Navajo term," you know, and that's this. But it's it, it, sometimes we just call it that because that is what they've done you know that that is i know that i know that's a specific term but it, it's a good term to to use as like as what you're saying and so these people would sacrifice one of their loved ones so they could have this power then is what you're saying well, it's i mean that's like the culmination of a training that's okay. that's one event a cardinal event but it's an event a long path but these are witches Right, these are warlocks. These are people that are that are incumbent by a familiar spirits, legions of spirits that are embracing knowledge, a specific form of knowledge that's weaponized evil. You know, it's not just that, it's it's tormenting people. It's learning how to traumatize, to disorient, to distract, to disturb people, and to make their lives hell. There's this like psychological operations, is how we would say it today. Okay, they they are adept at at crawling around in grotesque and putrid ways to like it. What happened was we when I was when I was I grew up in the White Mountains of Arizona for a season. It's got this area called the White Mountain Apache Reservation. There in on that reservation, there's some of the best witch doctors anywhere and those witch doctors are for hire they're money men okay they're balaam there's no difference they are willing to be hired out to special kill teams and people that are part of the combat operations group so the global response security staff teams and the scorpion teams and there's wolverine teams all these other other government agencies that are in the black book side of the world they can come in and hire these witch doctors to teach them the arts of stalking prey on one side, there's a very carnal, physical way of learning how to walk through a forest, learning how to walk through a building to where your target doesn't detect you, how to help suppress sound, how to use sound dampening materials, how to physically maneuver your body in space and time so that you're mitigating the acoustic features of what we call breathing and swallowing. That's one side of the, the skill set they teach, but on a deeper layer, they can teach you how to be a shadow walker. They can teach you how to split the realms of people's perceptions and to astrally project yourself into their space and to manipulate their environment to cause them to go crazy. You know, this is where there's things like what we would think of as targeted individuals. On one side, there's a very spiritual component to that. On another side, we have technological toys that people use to make people skin burn, to use microwave directed radiation weapons, to to torment people, to use voice to skull technology. That's all the high tech stuff. That stuff has side effects. That stuff has problems. It breaks down. It's junk by and far compared to what is possible when you learn the old ways that I'm not trying to entice anybody into this. First and foremost, I do not suggest or recommend any of this just so we're clear. However, it's unbelievable the capacity of what is available through the spiritual realm and through engaging in covenants with these other entities. And so if you want to embrace that path, it will answer you. You can learn how to summon demons and summon these other spirits, the spirits of the Rephaim, the spirits of the, the fallen ones, and get them to go ahead and enact your will for you on the earth. When that begins to take place and you become to be a portal, you yourself being the portal now. You don't have to go and get the cursed objects. You don't have to go and cut the stones and, and drip somebody's life onto it. You don't have to do any of that. When you are the host for the parasites, 
they come with you as your familiar spirits. I had these familiar spirits. These other guys that were going through these trainings went through ritual magic to be imbued with these spirits from the master to the apprentice, the breathing in of this life force so that they then had the power. It's a very parasitic, very perverse relationship that involves a lot of homosexuality and a lot of disgusting consumption of unclean things uh, horrific things digging up graves and defiling infant corpses i mean disgusting horrible stuff that's used so people can throw out a term like skinwalker and they get an idea in their head of some weird creepy thing that walks around the forest having no contextual understanding of what a real practicing witch doctor was for thousands of years not just through the dene people not just through the the Anunnaki, not just through any of these different priests but time immemorial it's been these un, these immortals that pass this knowledge on to mankind that imbue them the ability to do these things and that's where you can have somebody come into a to a target house and split themselves internally and start targeting different people inside the house and killing them stopping their hearts remotely tell what well, we would talk about telekinetic powers well these are sending essences of themselves to do the killing for them or being able to project yourself through spaces in walls to avoid studs and framing to shoot rounds through the walls to kill people from a, a safe and secure position that's that's where a lot of these x-men mutation abilities come from is partnering with these spirits to do these acts wow the, the, and, and, and a lot of times I think a lot of like Hollywood is giving us like the soft disclosure, you know, like the truth in plain sight. You know, when you're saying like these X-Men type of abilities, I, I think a lot of it is is stuff that we know that we know that's possible or that's happened. And, and we're trying to make it look fun and interesting. And, oh, look at this. You know, don't you want to be like this? Don't you, you know, they have kids, you know, um, almost worshiping these types of uh, mutants of, of sorts, you know, and it's. And, and, and I was going to bring this up. It's kind of like when you're talking about like the psychological warfare that's happening, I, I feel that it's kind of been ramping up more and more lately. Like I, I feel that, you know, like this perversion of, of reality is happening more where people are becoming, I, I, I would just say that there, there, I see it more and more that there's people making or, or doing things that you never see in the past. Like it, 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 some of the stuff is just happening. Maybe, maybe it would happen in the past, but it's more on a grander scale. There's more people that are actually falling, uh, falling prey to the psychological warfare that's happening right now. And, and, you know, it's, it's all the left and then the right. And what they don't understand, it's the same thing. It, it, it they're both being orchestrated. They're both being controlled and it's, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this, but I just, I just find this interesting when you're talking about the psychological warfare. Um, it, it's, it's, it, I think it's happening all around us constantly, you know, and it's, it's, it really helps to unplug, uh, unplug from everything. Hmm. I think you, you fundamentally hit it on the head that in order to actually be an authentic person, an individual with self sovereign thought, and actions because these these thoughts are what modify our behavior you know what you think about what, what you think about impacts you these thoughts we they're transitory they're elusive they're they're not every thought we think is our own and that's a fundamental reality that people have to embrace that like psychology in and of itself is the study of the soul now you got a bunch of people that deny that the soul exists as the academics within that field that's very perplexing that's that's quite hypocritical but they are, they're trying to understand what makes people do what they do. Why do people act a certain way? It starts with thoughts. And these thoughts can come from all kinds of different influences, sources. And now through this black mirror technology that was cultivated and developed by families, by multi-generational families, the Jesuits and the Knights of Columbus, the Knights of Templar, predominantly the Knights of Templar, the Rosicrucians, they brought this technology out of seances they brought this technology out of mediums they wanted to take what 
came forth from the ectoplasm of spiritists and table knocking meetings. They wanted to take it and tune it. They wanted to fine tune the frequency so there was a better connection on the phone call when they wanted to call Tartarus. When they wanted to call the Council of the Rephaim, they didn't want to have to keep cutting the throats of their children and sending them down and trying to summon up their spirit after them and imbued it into a go golem. They didn't want to have to keep doing this other form of magic to go through these processes because on one side it's very messy and on other times they're often the child and the individual goes insane. They call it breaking bad, meaning they, they literally lose their mind. I have family members that just went insane through the, the trauma, the shattering phase. They're just vegetables the rest of their life. They're, they're, couch, they're couch potatoes. The reason they seek out geniuses and they seek out high IQ is so that they can split off more and more pieces of that mind without it losing the whole as a sense. That shattering process, you know, like one, one of the acts of what's done is like a soul is bound up. They got high tech in the mid nineties, right? When I was kind of going through this stuff and they started experimenting in Phoenix, Arizona, there's some really freaky perverse doctors that did a lot of human experimentation and they're holdovers from the, 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 the third Reich. These are guys who got operation paper clipped in here and they got like the green pass. They didn't have to go through the hanging like everybody else. They're like, you come over here, you be our doctors. It's going to be great. You're going to have the, all the, the humans the, and all the stock you could use. The, that, that hanging was just to appease the crowds. They just, a couple of oh, people, yeah. you know, uh, and Nuremberg and everybody's mm -hmm. happy. Yay. And then we'll hide every, you know, bring everybody else in. Well, that it was the knowledge. It was the systematized knowledge that was the mo once again. You got a bunch of Luciferians all over the world, and all, they're they're not nation loyal. Never forget this. You can't lose sight of it. Like a, a subterfuge agent is loyal to somebody he's not telling you about. That's fundamental to it. This is why the Knights. This is why the Jesuits were fundamentally rooted out of countries, and they were utterly exterminated and banned because they would come in with these types of tactics and these mystic religions, and they would infiltrate everywhere. And their their guidelines, their bylaws, is not the Society of Jesus. These were the Knights of Mary. These were the Knights of Ishtar, the Queen of Heaven. They were mystic warriors. Fundamentally, they masquerade as something entirely different because their their job is to become whatever their targets need to perceive them as in order to be most effective to advance the agency of the of the pope of the vicar and and there's a different pope the grand superior black pope the jesuits pope there's all there's all there's all kinds of them anyways yeah. I don't want to get lost on that tangent I could go forever <laughs> but. That that black gold empire is just one of these subterfuge agents. There's other ones that operate under the synagogue of Satan. There's other ones that operate under the dragon bloodlines of the Lee family. There's other ones that operate out of the old Soviet blocks. Everybody's got these guys and these gals who are willing to do whatever it takes to go ahead and advance the agenda of the old gods because that's their boss. That's their daddy. That's their grandpa. They're going to do whatever he says. That change, those change agents are the ones who enact these psychological warfare operations. They're the ones who come in and develop the technology by channeling these spirits who are servants of death. Death has an agenda to bring about bloodshed on a very big scale. That's how he multiplies his kingdom. That's the battery bank that he needs to be recharging. Their hydroelectric power station is blood. Absolute blood, violence, hatred, shame, guilt, depression, anguish of soul. That's their battery bank. I call it the iniquity force. That force is what the kingdom of darkness operates under. The kingdom of righteousness, the kingdom of, of Yahuwah, that operates under a completely different covenant of set-apartness, of holiness, distinction from those things. One that is filled with love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. Love of the truth being the preeminent feature that uniquely identifies the servants of that master. That's a very different individual than a master of a servant of death who is willing to lie, to cheat, to steal, and to do whatever it takes to rip out the throats. Like if you read these oaths of these people that you are forced to swear in these ceremonies, they will disembowel. They literally curse their children to the third and fourth generation if they don't come and walk in their ways and keep the secrets. And this is the stuff that you see 
you see this when you're the young one filming it and it forever ruins you. It ruins you and it wholly convinces you that you can never get out, that you can never be free because look at what they did because he spoke the secrets. And this locks that in. It, it locks in so much fear and so much guilt and so much shame that get interlocked into there that makes you never willing to go against that cult, never willing to speak the secrets. And that's how these brothers enforce it on each other. But then there's the spiritual hierarchy that enforces those oaths that spiritually will torment people that, that deviate from the path, that leave the path and start following the narrow way. This is how these, these things operate. And in Phoenix, Arizona, one of those doctors began to develop a technique for killing somebody and bringing them back to life by freezing them, cryogenically cooling them down, taking the blood out of their body, putting it into a machine that cooled it down rapidly, putting the body in a state of stasis. That, that began to be adopted by these occult practitioners so that they could go and have conversations in the realms of Sheol and in with the fallen in the Council of Rephaim. That got pioneered there in Phoenix and Lake Havasu and Tucson, where a lot of people were fed into that human experimentation pr program to try to perfect that to bring them back to life so they could then tell everyone, hey, what do the old gods want us to do? What is what is our ancestor saying our marching orders are for 2021? That That's how these things are actually communing with the fallen ones. Holy crap. You know, it, it, it's... It, I don't even know what to say. It, it's something that's so, so deep. Like you, you know that, you know, you know, there's darkness out there, but you don't know how dark, you don't know how deep, how far they're willing to go, you know, to, to further their agenda and, you know, to further the, the old gods. It's, it, it's terrifying. It is absolutely terrifying. You know, I, I had, I had a good idea, but, you know, listening, listening and talking to you tonight, uh, it's kind of, it, 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 it's not for the 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 lighthearted, you know. It, it's it's really really severe. It, it's it's this is this is the reality. This is the reality that we're facing. This is the reality that we're going up against. And and I, I have a theory on something, you know, like considering that we are going up against this. I I find that this this psyop or this game that they're playing that um let's talk Q, QAnon, where it's like oh just you know trust the plan, trust the plan, and what they're trying to do is get you to do nothing. They're trying to get you to sit back and absolutely do nothing. And it's like, oh, this is happening. This is happening. Everything is happening. Just, just sit there on your couch and and just keep keep watching uh, 4chan or something like that, you know. And 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 your marching orders will get will get printed out. But in the end, you know, we are the ones we've been waiting for. You know, we have to be our own hero of our own story. Uh, we can't wait and we can't wait for someone else to to you know bear that cross we have to do it ourselves we have to be the ones man i could not agree with you more that weaponized information warfare that is being enacted you know okay to jump you up in the story a little bit to lobos and an overlap yes. of the, the where q i know some of you guys are gonna be pissed it's you guys got to do your own research and understand that sometimes the weapons are turned against you because change agents have been put into society to enact the controlling of the opposition, right? If you got it, if you haven't studied guerrilla warfare through history and time, like it's just one of the study, the East India trading company, study the British empire, study the Jesuits, study, study how people, colonial empires took over nation states and vassal colonies study the invasion and the conquest of mexico by bernal del castillo like study the works of history first-hand source documents of how the sas operated during world war ii like all of these things are peer-reviewed publishable documents that are now declassified that you can read for yourself and learn hey if i forensically examine history and I go ahead and learn what are the telltale markers for me. That's been a thorough examination of history from the scriptures, not just the Bible versions I got, but the vast majority of the texts that were laid out, not chronologically to author confusion, but the texts that were given and preserved by people historically for thousands of years. As I began to do this and study these things, you start to learn some telltale things that are when they find a trick that works on mankind 
the immortals will recycle that over and over and over and over again. And it started with a few fundamentals when the, the dragon of old, the great red dragon in the, in the garden, he whispered a few one-liners, just a, just a couple of little suggestions from this great, shining, fiery, awesome, beautiful, majestic, glowing giant serpent in a tree, right? Seraphim. Nothing like a little rattlesnake eating an apple. That gummit we've been programmed by a bunch of idiots and felt boards and Christian schools and Catholic schools and, and TV programming. It's not a bit an apple, y'all. The most incredible deceiver in all of creation executed a psychological operation against mankind to get the deed, to get the keys to the kingdom and the rights to rule mankind. You don't do that through, hey, hi, guys, I'm some scary dragon and I want to eat your souls. Doesn't work like that. You, you've got metaskid. They're called metaskids mazatoy, right? This is a, a foundational word that should be in your working vernacular. Shape shifters. We can throw out these other things like transformers. And that's the word that was used by the Greeks to describe these immortals. This is like their nature. These seraphim, these watchers, these ophanim, the cherubim. This celestial entities in the hierarchy of the gods, they don't have to operate by the same rules you, me, and others that were created from soil do. Because of that, they can appear like anything, like your worst nightmare or your best friend. And that that is literally what happened. The beguiling act of what took place in Eden was a promise of godhood. You will be like one of the Elohim. You will know good and evil, right? There was these promissory notes that were offered, just like a bank says, we're going to loan you the money. Meanwhile, they're lying to your face. There's no loan issue. This is a promissory note. This is magic money. This is how we create the money in a system where there's not actual money, but now you're going to believe there is. And because you believe it, you'll obey. Remember, we talked about thoughts, belief, and obedience all interlock when you believe the authority figure is authentic. You know, like when you believe they're authentic and that policeman who's pulled you over, the policia, when they've got their checkpoint, right? You're going to be like, yes, sir, whatever you need. And you're, where you are today, you have to learn the culture of bribes. You have to learn when not to give a bribe, how to give a bribe. You have to learn a very different culture to operate comfortably where you are and how to recognize authority from the Cartagenas and a lot of the other mafiosos that operate there. Just like mankind have had to learn how to operate under the authority of these immortals. And because of that, the gods had their trickery methods to get men to abdicate that. The other one was that they would open their eyes, that he would open their eyes. This is the path of illumination. This is the path of opening these other senses so they could perceive man, perceive the realms, the spiritual realms, the dimensional realms through different lenses. Those three promissory notes are still what gets offered to mankind every day. And people are all like drinking it up and eating it up. They're like, those stupid people, those Neanderthal knuckle draggers that fell for all the tricks back then. They were worshiping idols and bowing down and giving their babies over to the fire. We're never like that. We're advanced now. They're beguiled through pride. Pride mm -hmm. fundamentally produces ignorance and the ability to be blinded so that your adversary is able to completely destroy and devour you. Those are those interlocking features of what happens when these hyper-intelligent immortals come in and wage a psychological operation. And my contention is they were resurrected from their prison cells. They were held in chains of darkness for many generations until the proper time. And I believe that was the 19th century when they were brought forth and each one of them had individualized tasks and arenas that they went into society and built empires to facilitate the advancement of that dark one's agenda. That's setting the stage for what we are now as 2024 people inheriting their long-term multi-generational agenda to bring about a different kingdom, a kingdom that operates in Luciferianism, in open embracing of occultism, in necromancy and necrophilia. I feel that these things will be embraced as normalized and what will be persecuted is the righteous. That is what somebody like Michael Aquino or General Flynn and another guy named General Stanley McChrystal, those are change agents who are 
that former head, General Stanley McChrystal was the former head of Joint Special Operations Command when I got into the Lobos team out in Fort Lee, Virginia and started being trafficked, doing these operations. He's the one who rooted me out of the military because I threatened him in front of his buddies, people he was trying to show off to at the time. I didn't know who he was at all. He was in a plain suit. He was just another guy that had me kill another Lobos man, a, a man a man who I loved dearly made me kill him for sport. Wow. Ruined me. That man put on a parade show so people could test out X-class weapons and which programming training methodology was better. That man gave up his life so I could live in advance. That man, when he did that, put me at a different rank in the Lobos automatically. You can have these desk jockey commanders who are in it to win it politically, who are council on foreign relations members, who are people that are going to bow down on their knees in order to get the next promotion. That's literally what operates in the United States military on an unbelievably abysmal scale. Like the diversification through diversity programs has gutted our military. And so we got yep. a lot of desk jockeys that get a position. We're supposed to bow down to their rank like a bunch of idiots and just follow their commands blindly. In some of these teams, understand something. Autonomous assets have zero tolerance for that bull crap. None, son. And so I set off a chain of events in that moment in Fort Bragg that I didn't fully comprehend at the time because I was stinking 18 year old who'd been living through this hell and was finally doing what I've been waiting to do my entire life. And that guy with a very different agenda in mind, wanted a fast track to the joint chiefs of staff. He was willing to kill soldiers, to kill United States citizens, to kill innocent men, women, and children so that he could have blackmail evidence against his political dissidents. That's the operations that he was using the Lobos to do. Well, that doesn't sit well with a bunch of guys that come from backgrounds like mine. And we start turning on the mechanisms of how do I burn your empire to the ground? They were very capable, very scary dudes. I was a young little child amongst real men who had been doing it a long time. I barely got my feet wet in that mission. Barely got my feet wet before that guy whitewashed me out of the military. That ruined me. And that man got fast-tracked to the White House. That man, General McChrystal, got fast-tracked to the United Nations, started a consulting group, started an advisory group when he retired. He's the one who was giving your briefings on the war in Afghanistan. He's the one who was giving the public their briefings on the war in Iraq for all intents and purposes. That figurehead is a yes man for the dark agenda, for these elite luciferians he is somebody who pulls the strings on the public scale to do that he partnered with another man general flynn excuse me who they founded a consulting company there in alexandria virginia where we were operating lobos assets out of a safe house that had been used formally and established in 1940s as a red cross command station it was a, a place where spies could come and interact and get things passed between each other and that's got a tunnel network to all of these houses of power they took over that building in 2014 and started a, a consulting company that literally began to work with lobbyists to pass bills and policies to finance weaponized warfare against false news against people that were conspiracy theorists against truthers and again and starting to create what we would now look at at things like QAnon and people that come on there and harass you you think they're bots well these bots are developed by a bunch of guys who sit there financed by the government to try to fight what they think is counter espionage activity they think it's foreign assets and an espionage that's being used against the defense intelligence agency and that's being used against Mer you know indian head maryland and they're like well no we're trying to figure out which of these are actually russian nationalists who are trying to infiltrate to get out our newest explosives right they're using it for very different means and preterence but you got a lot of guys who take contracts for any amount of money to go kill and destroy the lives of people they don't care who they don't care why i just want to get paid a hundred thousand dollars a year and have my guns and my kit back i'll do whatever you want just give me the guns just give me the monies and money and leave me alone those guys get activated and sent after people to wage an information war to wage a 
discrediting war, character assassination war, and at the same time to gather and collect and galvanize the leaders from within there to hold them in a position where wait and see, follow the orders, just follow the white rabbit. Eventually he'll lead you out of here and whatever other NSA tactic that they're doing to recruit people in through cryptography and cicada and all these other tendrils of this same beast. But what you'll find at the end of it is so many of these players who have been willing to compromise so fundamentally that they are treasonous to their core and they fundamentally must be rooted out. And people may need to take action personally, individually, collectively in their own house. As for me and my house, I broke covenant. As for me and my house, I renounced my secrecy clauses and my oaths, and I changed teams, and I appealed to the judge of all the earth, and I said, listen, your word says I can make a decision today for myself, and I can say no, no. My wife got pregnant with my child, and I knew I had a choice to make. Do I bring her into the families and get all the trust fund and all the riches and all the power my dad had and his ancestors did? Or do I separate myself from them and become state's witness and whistleblow against these monsters for the rest of my life and lay out for people what has been effective for me at finding truth, at finding deliverance, at finding the power of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords to drive the darkness out of my life and give me a new authority, a new covenant of life and peace and hope that was found through the blood of the Messiah, Yeshua of Nazareth. That for me is what helped to set me free and give me the ability to wage a war against these people without bringing with me the spiritual baggage of these fallen ones. Wow. Amen, brother. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to, to see that, you know, you found, you found the light, you know, like mm -hmm. the, I, I think that would be a, a whole nother episode of you telling us about that journey, you know, mm -hmm. to the light. And, but I'm glad that you're there and, you know, like this, this world that you lived in for, you know, I'm, I'm going to assume maybe like 20 years or so, you know, this world of darkness, it, 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 it did its number, but, but by being there and seeing all that, you, you know what they're capable of so that you have the, 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 the wisdom and the knowledge to bring it to the light and say, this is what they're capable of. You know, you guys, you have to all be aware that this, this, these things are going on. This isn't just a story. This is, this is actually the truth. This is what's happening. And for the love of God, you know, ready yourselves. That's right. Be courageous, be a man, you know, that's what they've done systemically is to make men weak, to remove from them their balls, they castrate us all, you know, they've done it chemically, they've done it psychologically, they've done it spiritually, they've done it relationally, and they've castrated our ability to resist, they've made us soft. They've made us weak and they've made us comfortable and complacent and it's the most dangerous thing in the room is a bored man most dangerous thing in the room is a man who abdicates his responsibility and is no longer a shepherd is no longer a guardian is somebody that just, yeah, you can go ahead and take my wife. <sighs> just give me my Netflix and make sure my Amazon packages show up on time. I don't care. Just make sure I get that on time. Do you understand? I want, I want, I want, I need, I need, I need instead of I lay my life down for my wife. I give up everything for my family. I give up everything for my family, my neighbors to know the truth, to be free and to walk in that freedom. I sacrifice my time, my energy, my dreams, my desires so that they can have those things. Like I am living a very off grid lifestyle right now on a large portion of that is so that my daughters can be free. I, I work by the sweat of my face like a migrant worker so that my children can know what it's like to choose for themselves this day what they want. Like I want them, if they're like, oh, Dad, I really want to raise birds. I'm like, you got it, honey. We, I will do everything I can to orient my life and navigate my life so that you can raise animals. You want to raise heritage birds. You want to raise these exotic horses. Like whatever I got to do, honey, I want to make sure they have the opportunity to see their dreams come to fruition to let their talents express themselves and find the right people to make their life excellent. Like, I don't want to take them and use them as a money bank to get rich. But a lot of men are willing to do that. A lot of women are willing to do that. They divorce their children and shove them into primary school and they get, let them be raised by the sons of the dragon. And they wonder why they turn out all freak show level idiots. 
They're like, I don't know why they're useless eaters. I don't know why they're just completely going along with this agenda because you gave them the right to rule your children. You abdicated. You divorced your children when you send them away to school as a five-year-old, as a four-year-old, as a three-year-old, as a two-year-old, as a one-year-old. You're handing them over to the mind-controlled monsters, and they are far better at behavior modification than you ever will be. So you better learn how to take ownership of what you've been entrusted. If it's just you out there, if you're the 10 year old, the 12 year old, the 20 year old that's watching this, you have the opportunity to choose this day, whether you're going to be a man or a woman of discipline, as someone who is willing to put in the hard work to do the hard things, like read a book. Here's a big one. Well worth it, right? This is called in plain sight, old world records in ancient America by Gloria Farley. You know what this is? This what is one of those things that we talk about these like Rosetta Stone that helped us to finally unlock ancient Egyptian. Listen, y'all, this country, this continent is the oldest place that people have been living. The Americas is where all the oldest, everything took place. You're looking at some Fertile Crescent place. It's over here in so many ways, but that's not conducive for manifest destiny and slaughtering and butchering and killing all the original people here. So they're like, hey, new propaganda piece. We need to rewrite all the history books and slaughter all these people off so that we can enact the next layer of the new Atlantis and Francis Bacon and the Rosicutians agenda. So blot out anything in the Americas that shows that there was advanced civilizations and brilliant, articulate, capable people murder them all well there's these wonderful people called archaeologists and explorers who have an incredibly adept mind to be willing to go to all those places that you missed you know and start to uncover the lost languages and start to reveal to people hey we can decipher these runes we can decipher paleo hebrew we can actually unlock the americas and all of these different languages that are carved here and inscribed here because some of you walk along and you find rocks that look like this and you're like oh yeah there's just some kind of carving in there you have no idea that these are literally like so many of these runes come from people that came from the nordic regions of the world and they were coming over here like a highway and then we got other people from africa we got other people from the amazon we got other people and they would leave their carvings like we tag the graffiti on the walls in the bathroom stall you know they're like i lived here you know they're like <laughs> i ate deer here it was good i got shot like they literally carved this stuff into the walls and it's hilarious but they also carved their effigies they carve their mighty ones, which are wholly unique and can be traced and tracked. Like you see that the head on that being, that's the heraldic symbol of the death dealers. That is the tet in what is Paleo-Hebrew, that circle with an X, right? That is a way that you can track a familial priest class through time without language. It's called pictographic carvings, petroglyphs. This is why there's coded languages that are carved in stone so that even if we all die, my ancestors someday can come along and interpret this is how you follow the old religion. This has been around forever, and it's all over the Americas. This gal just did a lot of that through the southwest of Arizona, New Mexico, Oklahoma, and places where there's deserts. But it's all over the Americas, too, even out where I live in the Appalachian Mountains, right? There's petroglyphs with thousands and thousands of these symbols, same symbols carved onto them. And they're like, it's just some kind of Cherokee Indian thing, you know, a couple years old, maybe way older, but we don't really want to look into it. That obfuscation of history is starting to the facades breaking down. But if you would take the time and learn a discipline called reading, comprehending, and being able to communicate that, you can take what's in this book and change the course of history for many other people. Genesis 6, conspiracy, Gary Wayne, bro, you had it on. It was a savage episode. Yes. I like that episode. But this guy's put in the legwork of forensic historian so that you yeah. could understand their agendas and read it from yourself from firsthand sources. Like, not my opinion, their words. They plainly exactly. write about it and talk about it. They talk about this stuff. They're like, yes, this is how we're going to enslave mankind. This is how we're going to enact these agendas. Like, People that take the time to read a book can learn a lot of things. I'm plugging a few books here on purpose because they're way better than mine. Like Game of Gods, Carl Tykereb, bro, this is I the most savage spy. Bro, get him on your show. If there's one guy <laughs> I can recommend, I got a lot. But I've got a big recommend for those of you that don't know. Like I have, let me just pause real quick. Snatchfromtheflames.com. I have a 